So, as you might imagine, over the last few weeks, we've had a lot of new people join our Location Rebel Academy community because, well, there's a lot of people that want to learn how to work from home, start a business, not rely on the businesses they've been furloughed from or laid off from or fired from. They want to build something for themselves. And so, that's great. That's what we're here for. That's what I've been doing for the last 10 years is helping people build these type of businesses. But there's been a question we've gotten from a lot of new members uh, that I want to address here that I think is going to be valuable to you. Uh, and that is, should I start a freelance services website? I'm going to become a freelance writer. That's, that's how I'm going to get going with my online business. Do I need a website? Do I have to do it? Some people say you do. Some people say you don't. How do you do it? Well, in this video, I'm going to tell you if you need a website, and then I'm going to tell you all of the things that your website should have should you decide to build one. We are going to have a freelance services website checklist. So you can just go down the list, make sure you've ticked off all of these boxes to have a killer new website that's going to help you get new freelance writing clients. So if that sounds good to you, let's roll the intro and get right down to it. Honestly, at this point, I've been stuck in my house for so long, I don't even think I'm going to try and be funny. We're just going to try and make this super valuable, and I don't even know if it's going to be entertaining, but hopefully it's going to be super valuable for you. Um, big question, do you need a freelance services website? You don't have to have one. If this is your big hang-up, if you like are afraid of all the technical stuff, and that's your roadblock, and that's what's keeping you from reaching out and sending pitches and applying for freelance writing jobs, then don't worry about it. You don't need it. But... And this is a big but, it will give you a huge leg up. Think about this. You've got a business and someone emails you out of the blue and says, hey, I'm a freelance writer. I'd love to work with you. Uh, what's the first thing you're going to do? You're going to try and figure out if they're actually someone you want to hire. You're going to try and find more information about them. And if you can't find a place to get information about them and their writing abilities and their background, then you're probably just going to say, nope, we're good. And you're going to go find somebody else. But if they link to a website where you can see a bunch of their blog posts, you can see their about page, you can see a photo of them, you can learn all about them, you can get a sense of their writing style, it's going to make you much more likely to want to learn more and possibly hire that person. So as a freelancer, it's your job to make it as easy as possible for someone to say, yeah, I want to work with you. Here, here's some money. Go write for me. And a freelance services website is a great way to do that. Not to mention the fact that you can start building an email list off it, you can start getting search traffic from it. You know, there's just a lot of benefits. So in this video, now that we've established that you don't have to have a website, but you probably should have a website, I'm gonna give you 17 things. Yes, 17 things that your website should have in order for it to be as successful as possible. And I'm gonna try not to ramble, we're just gonna go straight down to them. I don't want to waste your time. You got Netflix to binge. You got pets to play with. You got kids probably climbing all over you. So let's, uh, let's just do it. I should also say that this checklist assumes that you have a domain name, you have a hosting account, and you have WordPress installed. I recommend if you're starting a freelance services website, go get Bluehost. I got a review to it below. I'll tell you all about why I like it, but short version for people that are just getting going, if you just need a freelance site, Bluehost is the way to go. Um, so this assumes that you've got those things. You've got at least a website and a starting point. All right, first thing you need. A premium theme. Yes, there's a ton of free WordPress themes out there, but a lot of the times they're going to have extra branding on there that you don't need. It's going to be tougher to customize your page to make it look the way that you want to. So spend the $30 to $75 on a premium WordPress theme. It's going to make your site look better and it's going to make your life easier. So just build that into your budget for starting your business. You won't regret it. Okay, second thing you want is an SEO plugin for your website. Um, Yoast is the most common. That's the one I use. They've got a free version that's great. That's all you need. Uh, but this is just ensuring you're giving yourself the best shot of Google discovering you. You're probably not going to get a ton of clients right off the bat from Google, uh, but you want to make sure your pages are optimized. You know, if you are a Portland finance writer, you want to make sure you've got pages with headlines that are Portland finance writer or whatever it might be. So this is just an easy way, even if you're not technical, to make sure that you're putting the right information in the right place to make it as easy as possible for people to find you. The third thing you need for your website is a contact form. You got to have a way for people to reach out to you uh, and say that they're interested in your services. So there's a plugin called Contact Form 7 uh, that's free. You can use that. It'll work just fine. Uh, you can also, if you want to do a little bit more with your contact form, customize it a little bit. You can use Ninja Forms. I'll link to all that stuff below. Uh, but again, make it as easy as possible for people to get in touch with you on your website. Four, 
Fourth thing, branded email address. I see so many people that don't do this. They'll be like, Sean Ogle writes at gmail.com uh, rather than uh, Sean at Sean Ogle.com. Uh, by having this branded email address that is custom to your domain name, it just looks so much more professional. It shows that you have a real business. You've got a little bit of a sense of you know technical competence, uh, and it's just going to be a much better look for you. So take the time. You might have to find a service that'll be like I don't know five bucks a month or something to have your custom email address, but it is highly worth it and money well spent. It'll come across really well when you're reaching out to clients. Number five, we actually just talked about this in one of our last videos, but have an email opt-in. Start building your email list. A lot of freelancers don't think that they, they need to build an email list, and you don't have to, but there is a benefit to doing it. Um, building a little bit of an audience, building a list of potential clients that you can reach out to, super valuable. So think about something that you can do that's going to incentivize someone to want to sign up for your email list. If you do this, you can use a service like ConvertKit or SendFox. Those are both affordable options for building your email list. So even if you don't do a lot with it, um, it's worth having the opt-in there so that uh, it gives people the option to keep in touch with you if that's something that they wanna do. And if you wanna learn more about this, I highly recommend you go check out the video. I'll link it above uh, that's all about freelancing and building your email list. It's going to be a valuable one. So check that out. Uh, the sixth thing, get a custom logo. Again, this is all about treating your freelance business like a real business, which it is. Um, so go on Fiverr, spend, you know, 50 bucks, 100 bucks, something like that. Find someone that can do a nice looking design. You don't have to spend a ton of money. Just have something that's custom to your business that looks a little bit better than just words. You know, when you go into WordPress and you just type in the name of your uh, website and it just shows up as text, oh, that's amateur hour. Go to Fiverr, get yourself a logo. It's going to go a long ways, again, towards that professionalism and proving that you are a real business. Anything we can do to make it easier for someone to say yes and feel confident and trust that you're going to be the right person to work with them, those are the types of things we want to show off on your website. Uh, number seven, uh, this is something that I found a lot of first time website builders want to add, and that's sliders on their homepage. You know, if you're building a blog and it's all about content, then, you know, maybe there's, you know, some value in doing that. But as a freelancer, you're not really gonna have a ton of benefit. You should have a big, bold headline that tells people what you're all about, maybe some text. Um, as a freelancer, especially a freelance writer, you're probably not gonna have a ton of photos or images that are directly relevant to what you're doing. So just having a slider on your homepage that's constantly showing new pages, it just gets annoying and it takes away from what you're trying to do. So if you get a theme that offers that cool slider effect, just slide past it and don't use it. That was a horrible joke. Horrible. I gotta... I gotta do better. So number eight, kind of going along with that, is you should have a blog component to your website. So I know that might sound contradicting. Um, even if you are not a blogger, you should have a blog. Um, you know, someplace where you can put up a handful of articles. Maybe you post once a month. It's essentially just getting your personality out there. Every piece of writing you put on your services web website is a way for someone to get a sense of what you're all about, who you are, uh, and all of that stuff. So the more you write and the more you put yourself out there, the easier it's going to be for someone to say, oh yeah, I like them. They're a good writer. I'm going to hire them. Um, so a blog is a great way to do that. I mean, you can have samples and you, you can have a dedicated samples page, uh, but a blog is just a nice way to kind of complement that and potentially get some search traffic as well. Okay, so what are some of the things that you should have in the content of your website? Well, number nine is descriptive and catchy headlines. Think about everything you put on your site. Think of it as a copywriter. How can you be persuasive with what you're doing? Um, so you want a, a headline that is going to grab people. You want them to know what this is all about. You want them to want to keep reading. Um, and one of the things that I use, a formula for a good headline, is an outcome someone wants, a time frame, and an objective handled. And so if you can use that on your pages, use that formula, you know, if you use one of those things, you've got a good headline. If you use both of those things, two of those things, you've got a great headline. And if you've got all three of those things, you've got a world-class headline. So as an example, one of the headlines I've used on some of our Location Rebel Join pages is make $1,000 in three months, even if you have a full-time job. So make $1,000, outcome people want. Three months, time frame even if you have a full-time job, objection handled. So think about how you can use that in your writing. So an example as a freelance services writer might be, I'll send you world-class blog posts in under 72 hours for less than your competitors. 
So world-class blog posts, something that somebody wants, under 72 hours, a time frame for less money than your competitors. Takes away that, you know, how much is it gonna cost objection. So just think about different places on your website where you can use catchy and descriptive headlines. You can use subheadlines on your about page. They don't all have to have all three of those components, uh, but just think about some of those things that can be a little bit persuasive and show that, yeah, you're a good copywriter, you're a good content writer, uh, and you're going to be the person that they should hire. Number 10. The 10th tenth thing you should be thinking about in your freelance writing checklist is you should have two photos of yourself on your website. One of the best things you can do for trust is let people see who you are. When they're reading through your site, for them to know what you look like so they can start thinking about you saying these things, saying your words, uh, it's just gonna make it that much easier for them to get a sense of who you are. And if you're just this faceless person trying to market yourself as a freelance writer, that can be a little bit tough. I'm not saying you can't do that. You can certainly do it anonymously or you can do it under a pen name, but it's just gonna make it a lot more difficult for you. So put yourself out there, put yourself front and center and say, this is me, you are hiring me. You're not hiring some random agency, you are hiring me. Here's my face, let's build this relationship together. Cause that's what this is all about is building relationships. People want to work with people they like. And one of the first steps to that is being able to get a sense of who you are and that's seeing you. So add photos to your website. Okay, so the next one is you need to have a good about page with a story. Like I said before, people wanna work with people they like. So give them a reason to like you. Tell them why you got into writing. Tell them what you're trying to support. If you've got a family, if you've got kids, put that in there. If you've got an interesting story of how you were backpacking the world and you supported yourself by freelance writing, talk about that. If you're into golf, if you live in a certain area, mention all of that. All it takes is one piece of, one commonality to build rapport. So I mention the fact I'm a golfer all the time because all it takes is one other person who's a golfer would be like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a golfer, we got this in common. You start building that rapport and it makes it that much easier to, again, build the relationship. So on your about page, as you're thinking about your copywriting, as you're thinking about being persuasive, figure out what stories you can tell that prove, one, why you're a good writer, why you got into it, why you're a good person to work with. So think about all those different aspects of your life that you can put on there uh, that someone might resonate with. All it takes is that one commonality to make it a lot easier to build a relationship and gain a client in the process. The 12th thing is have diverse samples and case studies. Think about the people you've worked with in the past. Think about the stories you can share, the successes you've had, and share them on your website. Because if someone says, oh, they did that for them, well, maybe they can do that for me. And if you do a lot of different types of writing, maybe you do you know, marketing funnels, but you also do just blog posts use a lot of diverse examples to show what you're capable of. And if you're brand new and you don't have any of those case studies or samples to share, make them up. Create an about page for yourself. Make a marketing funnel for a fake product or whatever. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be something real. It just has to show, oh, that's a good piece of writing. Oh, that's compelling. Oh, that gets its point across. Oh, that's effective. Um, so if you're just getting started, practice those things and then share them on your website. 13, along those same lines, testimonials. Who have you worked with that was happy with what you did? Get them to have a little blurb saying how great it was to work with you. Those go a long way. Social proof is really powerful. Um, even if you're just getting friends and family that say nice things about your character, the fact you're reliable, any of those types of things. Good things about you that are gonna make someone trust you, that's what you're looking for when it comes to testimonials. 14, the next one, a rates page. Uh, this is important because you don't wanna waste people's time. Or you don't want people to waste your time. You wanna make sure you're at least on the same general page as to the cost of your services as they are. So you don't have to be super specific, but you can at least give some generalities and examples to start the conversation. And this way, someone can be like, oh, they're way too expensive for what I'm doing, or, oh, we've got a lot more budget that maybe we need to work with a bigger agency whatever it might be. So at least helps make sure that you're you're generally on the same page as you're getting going. Uh, you don't have to include your rates. A lot of people don't. I've just found that it can be helpful, again, to make sure that you're not spinning your wheels, wasting your time uh, with people that aren't gonna be able to afford you. 15, have social media links. So if you've got an Instagram, if you've got a Twitter, if you've got Facebook, share all of that stuff. Because again, people are gonna be able to go and they're gonna be able to see the real you. 
People want to work with people they like. A great way to show off the things that you might have in common is through social media. So don't be afraid to share that. Don't be afraid to let some of your personal life into your business life, especially as a solo freelance writer. Um, it's not like you're some big corporation that has to have everything perfectly branded. When you're working for yourself, uh, it's all about you. It's about your personality. It's about your life. So don't be afraid to embrace that. So link to your social media on your freelance page. That could be really helpful. 16, the second to last thing on our checklist, and we've covered this all in just about every single one of these points, have a personality, show your personality. We actually did a whole video about why you need personality on a freelance services page. Um, I'll link to that below. Be yourself, put yourself out there. Don't try and use all the corporate jargon and be super stiff and formal, formal because you think that's what people want. No, show off your personality, have an opinion, show the things you like. You might turn a lot of people off. Those people aren't the right fit for you anyway. The people that are a right fit are going to be much more inclined to work with you because you show off that personality. So don't be afraid to include that. And finally, the last thing, the 17th thing on our freelance writing website checklist. Have a hook. What makes you different from everybody else? What's gonna make you more memorable than your competition? There's lots of different ways you can do it. It could be pricing. Maybe you say, I'll do 20 blog posts for $999. And that's your thing, that's your shtick. Um, actually, I mean, don't, don't do that, that's too cheap. Maybe, maybe 10 blog posts for $999. It's about 100 bucks a blog post. That could be a good way to get started. But maybe you have packages uh, that are memorable like that. Maybe you market your funnel in a box. Maybe you will do a whole marketing funnel for $10,000 or something like that. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be price related or deliverability related. Uh, it could be you're the freelance writer that's supporting yourself while trying to visit every country in the world or something, something like that. Have something that's memorable uh, that you can tie back into your business. What's gonna make you stick out when they're looking at a pool of you know, 10 clients? What's gonna make you stick out and say, oh yeah, they were the ones, they were doing like 10 blog posts for a thousand bucks, we can buy a package, it's super easy, that's memorable. Think about the hook you can have that will make things memorable. You can do this with your branding. We have a client in Location Rebel Academy right now who's actually tied their whole freelance writing services into the fact that they're into the martial arts. Um, and so the way they've branded themselves all ties back to martial arts. And it's actually a really interesting concept that I found works really well. So I'm curious to see how well that works out for them because it's a brand new site. Um, so I'll link that to below so you can check out an example of this but figure out what ties together everything that you're doing and what you can do that's gonna be a little bit memorable and make you stand out from everybody else. So there you go. That's 17 things you should add to your freelance services website. My name's Sean Ogle. I'm the founder of this thing, Location Rebel, where we teach you how to build small businesses you can run from anywhere in the world that allows you to do more of the things you love to do in life. If you're not sure what to do next, we've got a whole freelance writing guide. Go to locationrebel.com slash FWG. Uh, we'll help you get started with your freelance business. It's a six day course, it's awesome. So I would go check out that in the link below. And then I would go check out this three video playlist here. It's gonna help you figure out what the best lifestyle business is for you. Maybe it's freelancing, maybe it's not, but it'll give you a good overview of all of your options. So I hope you have a fantastic day and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Peace.